the recording. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I know you can see and hear me because Stephen helped me check. So um, grab water, grab coffee, grab something to, yummy to drink. Um, and I also suggest a pen and paper because if anything resonates with you, I want you to write it down. So get cozy, get excited for this. You're going to learn a lot today, I hope. And we'll get started. All right. I hope you're all having an amazing, magical December. It's gone by so fast this year. It's very insane. But if you aren't having an amazing month, then that's perfectly okay too. That's why you're here and I can help you. So I'll do a quick introduction for everyone that is watching now or will be watching in the future. My name is Alicia Turner. I'm a holistic confidence coach. I certified April this year at the top life coach school on the planet. Um, coaches that come out of the LCS community are literally changing the world as we speak. Um, at least that was my experience. They changed my world, so something. Um, this call is probably going to be about 40 minutes, depending on how fast we move through it and if there's any questions at the end. Um, so we'll go through the three steps of how to feel better. I'll introduce them, and then we'll go into much more detail after. If you have any questions or comments, go into that chat box, type anything in. I'm happy to keep an eye on it and answer any questions. And then at the very end, I'm going to talk about what I'm currently offering for life coaching right now, if you want to work together. All right. So the reason I chose this specific topic for us is because the people I know that don't have these life coaching tools or aren't practicing them currently, they tend to be the ones complaining the most. So they're feeling the most stress. They feel the busiest, the most behind. Uh, and this was definitely me a few years back. I would put so much pressure on myself. Um, and for some reason, I just suck out all of the potential for, for joy and peace and happiness, just like a vacuum, um, especially during the holidays. So by Christmas or New Year's Day, I was just over it. I was super negative and not really enjoying myself. I had no energy left over. I had no more momentum to give to my loved ones. And so if this is you right now, I want you to see that this emotional state is a choice. This is something I never really knew, but negativity is always a choice. It's never a result of what's happening around you or what season you're in. It's an internal decision. And so we really want to own that power or start to just recognize that power. If you've been feeling bad and believing like there's nothing you can really do about it, I promise you you're wrong. And that's good news because you can do something about it. It's awesome. So I'm going to teach you how. Your feelings are always choices. I'm going to show you how to choose your feelings on purpose and how to start to feel much more in control of them. But before we get into the three steps, I'm going to start with a few whys. We tend to not stop and ask ourselves questions that provide so much perspective. So I'm going to ask a few questions. Why do we feel so much stress this time of year or any time of year? Why does there seem to be so much pressure, shame, guilt surrounding the holidays or busy seasons? Why do we feel like failures at the end of the day or the week for not getting as much done as we had hoped? Why are we so distracted? Why do we set so many unrealistic goals and then feel extreme disappointment when we don't follow through on them? Why do we do that to ourselves? Why does it feel so overwhelming instead of light and happy and exciting like we want it to? So all of these frustrations, all of these whys, these, the answer to these questions is they're deriving from the expectations we put on ourselves. So more questions. That's basically what I do for a living. I ask questions. So where do our expectations come from? 
Who put them there? Do we ever really know like who, who put them there? Why do we have to have this done by now? Who says? Why should we be in a different place than we are right now? Where did these ambiguous timelines even come from? And why are we holding ourselves to them like we have a gun to our head? You can tell where an expectation is coming from by the way it makes you feel. And when expectations are not coming from an authentic, genuine, aligned place within, it means they're coming from someone or something else outside of you. This could mean they're coming from society at large, the people we follow on social media, our friend circle, our parents, anything, a movie, a show. When we're trying to play out a role that is not ours to play, we feel insane. And we do it all the time. We drive ourselves insane. And this is the reason. We tend to not be able to follow through on these roles that we've set ourselves up with. And then we shame ourselves for not being able to because we're literally choosing a path that's not ours. It doesn't belong to us. So when you have an expectation for yourself that is aligned and for you, it won't ever feel frustrating and stressful and like you're being dragged by life. It, it's supposed to feel exciting, motivating, scary in the best kind of way. You won't get caught in a land of perpetual negativity because you're actually reaching for something that's yours, that you really actually want. The bad news is most of us are playing roles that are not aligned with what we truly want. And the good news is I'm going to teach you how to fix this because you got to start where you are. I remember when I woke up and was like, this isn't my role. I'm in the wrong movie. I'm in the wrong class. And you kind of want to like scream and run and hide, but nothing's gone wrong. You're you and everyone else in the world and it's fixable. So as promised, here are the three easy steps for feeling better during the holidays. One, stop shooting yourself. Two, give back all the expectations that aren't yours. Be like, no, thank you. Here you go. You can have it back. And three, start to explore the expectations that are aligned with you. So we're going to start with number one, and I need water. Okay, stop shooting yourself. We think we should be farther along by now, right? Of course we should. Of course we should be farther along. We should have more money by now. We, we should already be in a serious relationship this season. Or if we are in a relationship, it should already feel better and happier and look better. We should have all of our shopping done, all of our to-do lists done yesterday. We should already have all of our big work projects done. We should be more organized. We shouldn't be eating so much. We should be working out more. We should be giving more. We shouldn't be so stressed. We should be drinking less. We should be healthier. We should be skinnier. We should be more muscular. We should be verified on Instagram. We should be happier. We should, we should, we should, until we have officially should our pants. I love how it sounds like I'm saying stop shitting yourself. It's a perfect analogy because when we're doing this, we are emotionally shitting ourselves. And when we emotionally shit ourselves, not only do we feel extremely gross, but we're taking that negative energy and spreading it to everyone, coworkers, family, everyone. It's all bad. They don't want it. You don't want it. No one wants that. We think the reason we're feeling so negative is because we don't have all these obscure shoulds now. We think that's the reason. We haven't made them happen yet, so we can't be happy. Once we do, then we can be happy. But the real reason we're unhappy 
is that we're choosing to hang on to these crazy expectations that were never ours to have in the first place. We're choosing to believe that all of these shoulds are just true. And it really seems like we don't have the power to change them. Like we're helpless to them. We're all viewing every aspect of our life through the lens of should. Like think about it, health, relationships, career, money, spirituality, anything, should. We take on, we took on this burden of should at a very young age, which means we've been practicing emotionally shitting ourselves for decades. We are pros at this. So first recognize that nothing's gone wrong. You're not alone here. Of course you're thinking I should, I should all the time. Of course. Of course you took on the world's expectations and believed they were yours to carry. It's what you've been taught. It's what you know, but you're an adult now and you have permission to decide your own expectations. You have permission to question all of the shoulds you currently carry. You have permission to see if they're really what you want. And it's okay if, they, if it is what you want. There's nothing wrong with wanting the thing. It's believing the should in the middle there. We can still get there, but we can get there without shoulding ourselves and without dragging ourselves through the land of negativity. Here's the problem when we do this. We are in a constant argument with, it, with reality when we're believing I should. If we're looking at all that is and saying, nope, not enough, not good enough, not smart enough, not rich enough. Nope, 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 not enough. We're so focused on who we are not and what isn't that we haven't given ourselves any kind of recognition or acceptance for who we are and what we do have right now. It's not very nice. Now you can choose to think all day long that you really should be different, that you should be more confident, you should be more disciplined, or more like that person that you really admire over there. You should be more like them. But choosing that doesn't change anything. It only causes you to suffer, to feel insane, to like slow yourself down. Like you're shoving yourself. Imagine like trying to get up and then you keep pushing yourself down. You're like, oh God. And you try to get up again and you push yourself down. Like that's a good visual for this process. Like you don't have to push yourself down, but you are. You feel frustrated and stuck and behind. And because of this unconscious choice, to believe you should be doing something different right now. I'll give you a fun personal example. A few years back at Christmas time, I was single AF. And I thought, oh my God, I'm in my late twenties. I'm so old. I should be in a relationship by now. I should already be married. It's just like panicking. I shouldn't be single. I shouldn't be alone. And on and on with the shoulds. And I just believe that all of those sentences were true. I never once checked in with reality or possibility or the many other options that are always available to us. I chose to stay stuck and focused on what I thought should be different. It wasn't helping me change. It wasn't helping me grow. It was me forcing myself to suffer emotionally unnecessarily over an expectation that wasn't even mine. It wasn't mine. Who says I had to be in a relationship? Who says it's wrong to be single during the holidays, New Year's Eve? Who? Who is this bitch? I want to meet her. It's mostly society. It's, it might be a few close family or friends. They might, they might believe it. They can believe that if they want. Does it mean that I have to? What did I believe then? What did I really want? I never bothered to ask myself, should I have been in a relationship? Or should I have been single like I was? 
Now, if I had taken the time to stop shooting myself, I would have seen that being single was exactly what I wanted right then. It was offering me so much. It was offering me everything. All the time I needed to figure things out, all the time to decide what I wanted. The truth was I had been in a relationship for the many holidays prior and it wasn't fulfilling or healthy. And so being single, that was exactly what I wanted that Christmas. That was exactly where I should have been. How much better would it have felt to think that? How much truer was that statement for me if I had seen it was an option? But when I framed it not under what society expected of me, but what I expected of me, I freed myself. Of course, this is hindsight. Past Alicia was back there. I was dragging her. I was pushing her down. But you live and you learn. So when we view our very unique, very different lives through these generic ass shoulds that we are just blanketing over everyone, everyone in the world, here, here are your shoulds. We're like handing them out like, you get a should, you get a should. It magnifies all of our emotions. I'm sorry, all of our negative emotions, all of our struggles. It narrows our focus and it leaves us feeling like everything is black or white, all or nothing. I either have this or am this, or I'm a complete worthless loser. We all suffer under these expectations that don't belong to us. We never check in to see what's really ours. All the shoulds that aren't really ours rob us of perspective and the ability to see that we have an infinite number, infinite of, of thoughts and emotions available to us right now. But we instantly cut ourselves off from possibility. We limit ourselves and what we can create when we choose to stay hyper-focused on should. And that leads us into the second step which is to give back all the expectations that aren't yours. So all of our shoulds have a tiny fine print and it says you should have this thing because, and the because sounds something like, because this is what's good. This is what valuable people do. Like smart people do this. The least smart, cool, tall, handsome, pretty nice people. This is what moral people do, higher ground, you know, moral people. Or it's because you're not worthy until you have this. So when I finally do have this, I'll be more valuable and more worthy. That's the fine print. We don't see it. It's not like our brain has got a banner and it's saying like, this is what you're thinking. But that's what's happening under the should, underneath. The urgency and importance that this fine print hidden belief creates leads us directly into a self-locking prison of negativity. You're just walking in like Will Ferrell after the burrito scene. You're walking into the glass cage and you're locking yourself in there and you're suffering. But you aren't a victim to this prison. No, you, you walked in and you locked it. Your shoulds are not connected or attached to your worth and value. I want you to hear that. Every time you have a should, I should be different. Your shoulds are not connected or attached to your worth and value. You are the creator and controller of all of your shoulds. You are either allowing them to be there or you're not. No one else is. No one's holding that gun to your head. So like I said, all of our emotions are a choice. And there is a way to choose them on purpose. You just have to learn how. And it's easy. It's easy to do this. It's fun. These expectations sometimes feel like a moral necessity. Like they're an, a complete non-negotiable fact. Like I was really just believing that I should be in a relationship was a non-negotiable fact. I was like, I had my case. I was ready for the judge. 
I was ready to prove it all day long. Like, these are all the reasons. This is a fact. It's just obvious. Everyone agrees. Because of this, I saw this should as like a moral duty. It's like, it's, it's my duty to be in a relationship at Christmas. I was believing in the story of what is right. It's right to be in a relationship and wrong to not be in a relationship. And since this is what, since this is what's right, I don't want to be wrong. But not everyone agrees with this. This goes for any area of life, like work, money. It isn't factual what society considers right or wrong. No, those are just people's opinions, people's thoughts. It, it might be the majority of society, but it's not all of it. And if it's not feeling good for you, then that means it's not you. It's not your should. I wasn't letting myself see that. It's hard to do that. And by choosing this, I was making myself feel negative, behind, worthless, less valuable because of where I was right then. I wasn't meeting this expectation that wasn't even mine. So I want you to imagine the possibility of your life right now without any shoulds. Say it wasn't even possible for your brain to have that function. You couldn't, like, didn't compute. You're perpetually living in a reality where you don't have the option to even consider it being different. You only have this reality. It kind of freaks you out. The part of your brain that does all the shoulds is like, no, I can't live without my shoulds. I need my shoulds. It's funny because we spend most of our lives trying to escape the present moment or constantly resisting reality, fighting it, trying to change and manipulate it. When we turn our noses up at reality and scoff at it, like it is inferior to the visions in our lucid minds where all of our shoulds are, it's inferior. We, we, we're turning our noses up at the potential to feel happy and fulfilled and peaceful and free. We're literally being so stubborn in our little cage, we're locked ourselves in, we're choosing to suffer over maybe being wrong about what we should expect of ourselves. So even just imagining, allowing exactly what is right now to be enough makes us feel a little spooked. We're like, oh, is this safe? I don't have any supervision. Am I allowed to do this? What if where you are, who you are, and what you have today was as worthy and as valuable as you'll ever be? Like nothing could change it. Nothing you do, nothing you get, nothing you become could change that. What if all of these ambiguous things like relationships, money, possessions, status, were not tethered to that truth, that truth of your unchanging value, that you're as valuable as you'll ever be right now? This is huge to imagine that. This kind of shift is what allows you to ask yourself the useful questions that gets you out of the cage, out of the prison. It allows you to, to feel free enough now, right now to move forward, to like stand up and not get shoved back down, to be like, oh, okay. It opens up room to see what and who you already are, like how amazing you are already. How often do we do this? How often do we let ourselves celebrate how far we've come? How often do we stop and consider like, I'm amazing. It's like we have an aversion to it. Here's the thing. Our brain is programmed with these shoulds. By age seven, 
it's like a computer program pumped full of enough shoulds to last us until we die. They're not going to go anywhere. They're always going to be in our brain. They are coming along for the ride. But awareness of them is what allows them to see it and just give it right back. You just politely say, I do not receive the should. It is not mine. I do not want it. I see it there in my brain. I know it's not objective truth. I know it's not objective truth, right? Everyone repeat after me. It's not objective truth. It doesn't belong to me because it doesn't feel good. No, thank you. So you're like, I see it. No, thank you. I see it. No, thank you. And you have to do that indefinitely. Welcome to being a human. We'll never get to a place in life where shoulds won't creep up and present themselves. It's our job, our higher self's job to get good at recognizing them, questioning them, and then redirecting our focus on purpose, with purpose. People think this is like easy, done. But this isn't very easy. Like this is why you we all need help. Like when we try to do this alone without like a community of support or people doing it with you, we feel like we're on an island, we give up and we go right back to the shoulds. The way you know it's not your expectation, again, is how it makes you feel. It really is that simple. Does believing you should have this thing right now feel amazing and expansive and certain? Like, yes, I'm gonna have this. Oh, I'm excited. Or does it feel constricting and awful and nauseating? in the worst way. That's your answer. That's what our emotions are for. I don't know if anyone's taught you this, but our emotions serve a very, very important purpose. And we're usually not aware of the purpose, so we're misusing and misreading our emotions. But they're there to lead us on our path, our unique and different path that's aligned and authentic and amazing. That's what they're there for. We're supposed to follow what feels right and true for us, what feels good. What a mind explosion. You probably didn't think that was that was what's going on. But when we don't do this, when we don't follow what feels right and what feels good, our emotions keep attempting to redirect course. Like red flag, you're off course. Red flag, you're off course. We're not supposed to ignore and and suppress those flags. We're not supposed to ignore and suppress what feels right and force ourselves to feel awful and negative and insane. We're supposed to run, not walk, run toward what feels true for us. And it feels good. And you're allowed to feel good, you know. You're allowed. There's no rules saying you can't feel good. So what does this mean for you if you've been feeling like absolute dog shit for a very long time? All it means is you actually have to change your direction now. You have to make changes. Sorry. You actually have to face things that you've been avoiding. You have to take responsibility for where you are right now. You have to take responsibility for walking yourself in that prison and be like, oh, I did this. This was me. And then figure out where you want to go. That's, that's the last step. Explore the expectations that are aligned with you. Oh, if you're anything like me five to 10 years ago, this last step, the idea of, of exploring what's aligned for you scares the shit out of you. That was me. I was like, huh, what? I can't keep playing this role that society gave me? And just living on autopilot and pretending like I'm okay? Why? I have to like actually learn how to be happy. I'm like, it's like I almost turned it down. Some people do. But this is like matrix level shit. Once you become aware of the actual control you possess over this situation, over your life, your life, it's short. A part of you dreads finding out that you have to be the one to change it, that you have to make different choices, that you have to show up differently. You can't pay someone else to change your life. You can't buy it. You can't keep searching for it outside of you. 
in work or fitness or relationships. You have to go head to head with you. Bing, ding, ding. You have to figure it out. I can't figure it out for you. That's not my job. Home girl, that's your job. So I want you to get your pen and paper now and I want you to write down these questions. When this video is over, whenever you have time, I want you to answer them in detail. Like 10 pages is not too much. Okay, I don't wanna overwhelm you. Just do your best. Uh, this, is, this should be the kind of exciting, scary, good feeling that comes when you start moving your compass towards your alignment, towards your purpose. When you start to search for the expectations that do belong to you, this is, this is the time to do it. Because the only place all of your answers exist are in your own mind. Okay, so the first question is, where am I right now? Start with the good. List out all the amazing things about where you are right now in life. Uh, you can, then you can go to the not so good, but our brain is like a heat seeking missile uh, and it's constantly targeting the negative. It's like, oh, it's like all this good stuff is right here. And it's like, oh, psh, negative. Use the control you have to force your brain to think about the positive first. Otherwise we forget all about what is working, what is good. And we need to remember to focus on those things. That's how we stay sane. We need to give ourselves recognition. We need to appreciate ourselves. We have to be nice to ourselves. There's no way to get there if you're being a dick. Otherwise, we end up feeling like a complete victim to the world. You aren't a victim. Start with the good, everything that's going great, and then go to the bad. Then notice all the shoulds you currently have. And for every should, ask yourself, is this mine? Or is it someone else's? Does it feel expansive or does it feel restrictive? That's math. Just collect data. Do not judge whether it feels good or bad. Just collect data. Second question is where do I want to go? Don't get stuck in the how trap here. The purpose of exploring what's in alignment for you isn't about figuring out logistics. Okay, I'm not, I'm not like, Okay, figure out everything now. Don't stress yourself out. I want you to just get, get in your mind, no rules. You don't have to pressure yourself, just explore. Where do you want to go? Allow yourself to do this while you answer this question. Dream about where you wanna go, who you really wanna be without trying to be realistic or logical. Be like a kid. Imagine your ideal scenario, like over the next two years, five years, 10 years, go there, go to that place where it all happens for you and be specific. We all think we want the same things in life. Like, oh, I'm not going to go after that because everyone wants that. So there, of course, won't be enough for me at the end of the day. But that couldn't be further from the truth. We are all so different and so unique and have specific desires and dreams and visions and we don't let ourselves find them. Be a person that lets yourself find yours. Detach from the world's desires for you and stop playing out that role and let yourself find and fulfill your authentic role. Live in integrity. Not many people do it, but it's fun to start doing it. It's like, this is what I've been missing out on. All right, and finally, the last question is, what's the path I want to take? Again, I'm not saying logistics. I'm not saying, how are you gonna figure out how you're gonna make that money and do that thing? I'm not asking that. Don't hear this question and be like, oh God, okay, I have to figure this out. Am I gonna go back to school? Am I gonna buy this course? That's not what I'm asking. What's the path you wanna take? Do you wanna take the path of unlimited possibility? the path of purpose, alignment, the path that feels amazing and authentic as you travel it, as you're going, the path where you aren't afraid to face your emotions, where you have a balanced and fulfilling experience, the path where you are in control of your emotions and thoughts and not the circumstances around you. 
where you're believing in all that's possible and no longer cutting yourself off from reality, where you're blowing your mind constantly with how you can change and how you can grow, where you're actually spending focused time appreciating yourself, celebrating you, celebrating where you've been and where you are and where you're going all at once feeling confident and certain about going into the future and not terrified and dreadful. This path isn't just a fairy tale. It's not like a scam that some people are like, (laughs) like it's not a scam. It's a reality for so many people right now. So many people that have learned these tools and are just practicing them. There's nothing special or extra valuable about the people that have chosen this path. It is available to literally anyone who is conscious with a brain that wants to take it. It is available to you right now in this moment. No one on earth can force you to take it though. That's the whole thing with free will and human autonomy. Like as much as I want to force everyone to take this path, I want to like get in their brain and just be like, take this path. It's like, I can't, you got to choose it. No one can trick you into taking it, coerce you into taking it. You have to be the one to decide and you have to re-decide and re-choose this path almost every single day. You have to keep choosing it. You don't just choose it once and you're done. You have to re-decide because the other path of arguing with reality, playing and choosing roles that were never ours to begin with, feeling negative, feeling trapped and behind, it's always going to remain available to us. It's always going to be there as an option. And not only is it an option, but our brain likes to believe it is the only option. So let it sink in that that's a lie. Feeling shitty is is not the only option. You are not limited by this fearful, ancient function in your brain that has a hard-on for negativity. You are so much more than that. You are so much bigger than that. And you should thank your emotions for holding up all the red flags along the way, for stress, for frustration, for confusion. Every time you're believing you should be doing something different than you are. Your emotions are these flawless messengers. They're literally so smart. They know what they're doing. You just haven't been taught how to decode them, how to receive them. So you think you're just being attacked by the grumpies, but your emotions aren't attacking you. They're like a scared little dog, like your scared sweet pup that you're taking through a car car wash. They think they're going to die in this strange contraption. They're confused. They're like, why is my human punishing me today? What did I do? Why is she torturing me on a Tuesday morning? I I don't know what I did wrong. And so they bark and they pace and they whine and they claw at your arm and they like try to get out of there because they're like, ah, this is death. They resist the whole experience. And then the door opens and they learn, oh, I was safe the whole time. That is literally what you're doing. You are the dog in this situation. You think the valuable information your emotions are trying to send you are punishing you. It's a strange form of torture. But you're also, at the same time, the human driving the car. You're also the higher part of your brain that knows this is just a car wash. Nothing's gone wrong. In fact, this is good for me. This is good for me. You have to learn how to understand and console that loving, sweet little dog. You have to learn how to teach yourself. Oh, I was safe the whole time I felt this way. I was safe the entire time I was experiencing this emotional pain. Those emotions were actually protecting me from taking a path I didn't want to take. Just like we love our dogs when they're scared and confused, we have to learn how to love all of our emotions when we feel scared, confused, and negative. We have to see them for what they really are, which is valuable. We don't know we're in victim mode until we know. 
if we already knew we were in victim mode, we would stop choosing it immediately. We would be like, oh, hell no. No, I, I got this. But we don't know it until we know. So to review these three steps, stop shooting yourself. I just, it sounds so funny. Give back all the expectations that aren't yours and start exploring the expectations that are yours. Start feeling better. Don't take life so seriously all the time, you guys. We're meant to be having fun. We're meant to feel good, feel well-rounded in our experience. It's supposed to be a rich life. And rich doesn't mean happy all the time, right? Rich means I can be happy today and I can be sad tomorrow and there's nothing wrong with being sad. Nothing wrong. So if you're interested in learning about what I'm currently offering, I'm gonna run through that really quick and then I can answer any questions or look at any comments you guys might have. So right now I'm taking new one-on-one -on -one clients through the month of January. I have started filling those slots. So if you're interested, please schedule a consult now. It's free. You can go schedule it on my website. Um, these one-on-one -on -one sessions give you personalized help, but they also teach you all of these tools. So you're able to manage your own mind and emotions and you become a pro at it. My job is to give you all these skills. So our relationship ends and you can do it on your own. I'm not there to be your crutch. I'm not there to hang on to you forever. You are going to be able to learn how to do it all by yourself. So things I teach you are like how to stop resisting reality and start creating this aligned expectation for yourself. I teach you how to redirect your focus from all that's going wrong to all that's going right. I teach you how to feel your emotions instead of avoiding and suppressing them and pushing yourself down when you're already down. I teach you how to create the future you want with confidence, certainty, and instead of being dragged and stressed and behind. I teach you how to set goals from a place of abundance so you can actually enjoy the entire process of getting there and then blow your mind when you actually make it happen. I teach you how to have healthy relationships, set boundaries, take care of yourself. Um, I teach you how to ask yourself the useful questions that open you up to possibility and show you that you're never limited, you're never cut off, you're always connected to possibility. And I hold objective space, one of the most important parts of my job. It's so valuable to just have someone there to listen to you objectively, to listen to your problems, your thoughts with zero agenda and zero interest in controlling your decisions. I help you learn how to make decisions so you feel amazing and clarity when you do. Um, this exact process is what teaches us how to find all of our answers within. We have to stop consulting the world to answer our, answer our questions. We have to learn how to answer them for ourselves. So it, it's pretty amazing. Again, if you're interested in a free consult, go ahead and schedule an appointment now at aliciaturnercoaching.com. And we can see if this is the right kind of work for you. Um, so, yes, Shauna says, just surrendering to our current state and celebrating. Very freeing and peaceful. So true. I love surrendering. We were talking about that earlier, Shauna. Love it. So, all right. We'll call it here. Best of luck with your brains. Be on to them. Don't believe all those pesky shoulds. You can still accomplish a whole lot with these shoulds, but it feels terrible. You can get so much done believing you should, you should, you should, but you feel awful. So don't settle for a shitty experience just because you haven't learned these tools yet. Living in authentic, aligned desire feels so much better feels like a thousand pounds off your chest. You're like, oh, I can just exist now without torturing myself. And that's what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to feel lighter. All right. I'll see you next time, my friends. Thank you so much for being here today. Have a wonderful holiday. Mwah. <laughs>